midfoot fractures and dislocations. This is from the OTA Core Curriculum Resident Lecture Series Version 5. Slides are by Dr. Nicholas Romeo and I'm Sakib Rahman narrating. So these are our objectives. Understand midfoot anatomy, under, uh, identify indications for advanced imaging and stress exam, uh, identify specific injury patterns, comprehend the goals of treatment, and understand indications for arthrodesis versus ORIF. And here's the outline of how we'll go through this. We'll first go through some anatomy, physical exam, imaging, and then treatment of specific injury patterns. So anatomy, well, there's column theories, a couple of column theories. Um, in this particular column theory here, the medial column is your sort of like your first ray. So the first tarsal metatarsal and uh, naviculocuneiform joints. Uh, th this is fairly rigid. Um, there's limited mobility here. Uh, the mobile segment is really at the tail of the navicular joint. Um, then the intermediate column uh, shown here in uh, red is your second and third TMT and navicular cuneiform joints, which is also fairly rigid. Um, and that's locked in also, uh, so there's really no motion here. And um, then you have your lateral column, which is your more mobile fourth and fifth TMT joints. And uh, this is essential as, uh, you know, for shock absorption on uneven surfaces. So that's what your lateral column is helpful for. Now, there's also a two-column theory, and this is out of Rockwood and Green, uh, 2019. Um, so you have the medial column, essentially, which is rigid and a lever for propulsion, and the lateral column, which is mobile, shock absorber, and uh, accommodates the uneven surfaces. So th this kind of is um, a little bit of a simplification of the three columns. So when looking at the bony anatomy, note the alignment of the uh, talonavicular and naviculocuneiform joints. Uh, maintenance of the medial and lateral column length is critical uh, when restoring the midfoot. Um, so when looking at the anatomy, um, the tarsal metatarsal joints have little inherent stability. Uh, and when you remove the soft tissue attachments, they have fairly shallow articulations, uh, as can be seen here. Now, uh, the bones do have somewhat of a trapezoid configuration. You can see uh, here that the, um, on the right-hand side, the, um, you have a recessed second met, uh, tarsal metatarsal joint, so the middle cuneiform there, and that's the keystone of the transverse arch. But uh, these individual joints are somewhat flat on flat, so you really don't have a lot of inherent stability, um, and um, therefore they are inherently unstable. So a little bit complicated here, the anatomy, but uh, this basically goes through the um, a lot of the ligamentous structures here. Uh, there are interosseous ligaments, such as the um, Lisfranc uh, ligament. There's the ligament of sapi, which is your plantar oblique ligament. Um, the uh, dorsalis pedis is found just lateral to the EHB tendon at the level of the tarsal metatarsal joint, so be aware of that when you're doing your dissection. Speaking of vascular anatomy, the local blood supply should always be considered uh, when you're considering uh, surgical planning. So this is an outline uh, as viewed from the medial side and from the uh, plantar or dorsal foot on the right-hand side. Uh, and this shows the uh, posterior tibial uh, artery and its branches and then the anterior tibial artery and its uh, branches distally. So you will encounter some of this as you um, dissect on the dorsal part of the of the midfoot. So the navicular uh, does have somewhat of a tenuous dorsal blood supply, so you do have to be careful in dissecting dorsally in this area to just prevent uh, devascularization. So moving on to evaluation uh, on clinical exam. So you want to be able to make sure you evaluate the soft tissues, uh, inspection, look for skin tenting. If there's gross deformity, a lot of times there may be some dorsal skin tenting, neurovascular evaluation. Uh, don't forget to look at the plantar part of the foot because ecchymosis here can potentially give you a high suspicion for a midfoot ligamentous injury. And that's a patient with a Lisfranc injury. So what about the imaging? 
So standard views are AP, oblique, and lateral of the foot. Um, and uh, if you have a patient with uh, perhaps a not so obvious injury and um, you need to uh, assess perhaps by stress examination, uh, then you can uh, do standing views. Now, if you have a multiple trauma patient, this may not be possible. Uh, but in the isolated injury, um, if your static views are not uh, um, that impressive, then you can do standing views to uh, get stress to um, apply stress. So here you can see a non-weight bearing AP X-ray on the left, uh, and you pay attention to that uh, uh, first to second interspace there, and you can see how there's now subluxation right of the second metatarsal base on the middle cuneiform, and you have widening now of this space so that indicates instability with a standing view. Uh, CT scans can be helpful um, to evaluate, especially intraarticular extension. Um, 3D imaging with the CT can also be really helpful. MRI is helpful to evaluate ligament st structures, but you know it's a static exam. You can't get dynamic views in most cases like you can with x-rays. So uh, here are a couple of the stress maneuvers that you can do. Um, and this is something you can do intraoperatively by pronating, abducting, and plantar flexing uh, the foot. You can also do a TMT squeeze test. And these are ways to stress the joint and see if you can produce instability. So you want to make sure that, um, you know, your, on, on your AP and oblique views that your tarsal metatarsal joints line up. So here you can see, you know, kind of an unbroken line on this, uh, on the right-hand side. So here you see the medial border of the metatarsal and then the medial border of the middle cuneiform line up without any disruption. Okay, so that's what you want to see. And on the oblique x-ray, you're going to look for that in the uh, lateral column. Um, also, you can see the first metatarsal base lines up with the lateral aspect of the middle cuneiform, of the medial cuneiform. Whereas on the standing view over here, you can see that um, that does not line up. And we showed this in the last image as well. Um, so the medial base of the third metatarsal should be in line with the medial aspect of the lateral cuneiform. Uh, you also here on the oblique view, the medial base of the fourth metatarsal should be in line with the medial aspect of the cuboid, right? So you want to see this line up. And if it's not lined up, that could indicate disruption as is shown here. What about the lateral view? Well, on the lateral view, what you're looking for is plantar displacement, dorsal displacement of the um, tarsal metatarsal joint relationship. So the metatarsal base should never be more dorsal than its respective tarsal bone. So on the, on the top image, the right foot, that's normal. On the bottom image, there's some slight incongruity there. Uh, you can also see some dorsal soft tissue swelling uh, over here. Uh, but uh, this is what they're drawing your attention to, and that there is some slight subluxation of the metatarsal base dorsally with respect to its um, respective cuneiform. So, um, as we mentioned, uh, standing on the same plate can be really helpful because then you can compare uh, one uh, injured side with the uninjured side. So here you can see that uh, comparison. So um, other things you can do is look for a flex sign. So a flex sign is a small avulsion fracture uh, that can be seen often at the in that first second inner space, often coming from the base of the second metatarsal or medial cuneiform. That could indicate that there's instability. Um, CT scan is useful for evaluation of intraarticular extension, as uh, mentioned previously. Uh, and here you can see CT scan demonstrating a fracture of the medial cuneiform right here uh, with lateral translation. And you can see that translation right here, right, of the um, 
actually, you can see translation of multiple joints here, right? So CT scan can be really helpful sometimes uh, as well. And um, MRI, again, has limited use as static evaluation, but uh, can be helpful to look at the ligamentous structures. All right, we're going to pause here, and then we'll get through all the specific midfoot injuries um, one by one in the next video. Thanks.